So, you're itching to make a video game but don't know which engine to use? Ask yourself, are you a neurodivergent ideas guy or a coding chad who's going to recreate GTA 5 but bigger and better? Fear not, allow me, your Walmart brand Sam Sulek, to be your Chiron and guide you down the top six game development engines so you don't waste years of your life learning Unity. And just to clarify, absolutely everything I say in this video is to be taken with the utmost sincerity. None of this is jokes. And we all know which community is going to leave the most comments because they're butt hurt. It's good and real. So to start off, let's discuss making your own game engine. Now you've got your mainstream engines like Unreal Engine 5 and Godot and Unity, but why would you use any of this perfectly good software when you can just create it yourself from scratch? Ask yourself this one question, why? Who hurt you? Guys that code their own engine are real sickos. You see, mainstream engines have libraries, asset stores, all things that will help you build a game. So to make your own engine from scratch is just to avoid all of these perfectly good methods. If you have a friend that says he's thinking about starting his own game engine, might be time to check his trunk for bodies. See, I'll make fun of Roblox developers because I live within a thousand feet of a middle school, so I'm safe here. But guys that code their own engine, I'm like constantly looking over my shoulder, expecting them to just show up and start talking about Vulcan drivers. These psychos will spend days, weeks, months, years coding complex graphics to allow them to do crazy, never before seen things like render a triangle on the screen. Do you have any idea what could be accomplished if we channeled this autistic level of hyperfixation into something, literally anything else? We could end world hunger. We could solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Hell, if you told them that curing cancer could speed up compile times, they'd have it done by lunch. But don't worry, these developers tell themselves that all their blood their sweat and their tears will be worth it because they'll be able to get a job in the fiercely competitive game dev industry. It's a real good thing that companies are still building their own engines and aren't just using mainstream ones. It's not happening, right? But don't worry, you've acquired such a deep understanding of coding that you'll be able to land a job anywhere. As long as there's not a requirement to make eye contact for three minutes during an interview. Now, moving on to Roblox. What was once just a children's game has truly grown up over the years into something that is now a publicly traded company that Wall Street bets lost money in. Roblox attracts a unique crowd of developers who are either middle schoolers making 20K a month in ad rev or degenerate neckbeards living in their parents' basement. And I know what you're thinking. These two couldn't be more different but they actually have a lot more in common than you think. For instance, they're both interested in dating middle school girls. Hell, if I wanted to hire a Roblox developer, I wouldn't be looking through job postings on LinkedIn. I would just look up YouTube video essays and start from there. Now, Roblox development slash scripting is done in a programming language called Lua, which is kind of like JavaScript, which is kind of like the Black Plague. No one under the sun understands or enjoys JavaScript. To say that something is JavaScript adjacent is like saying it flew on Jeffrey Epstein's plane. Not implying that Lua is a bad language, I'm just saying I'd feel more confident with Casey Anthony babysitting my kids than a Roblox developer. Now, Roblox has actually been around for 18 years, meaning it's legally able to buy a gun and go to war and also mentally developed enough so that its developers won't hit on it. Speaking of mentally developed, Let's talk about Unity. <sighs> yeah, let's let's talk about Unity. Now, as a Unity insider, I have had the privilege of Unity actually sponsoring videos on my channel in the past. So it would be kind of inappropriate for me to give an opinion on the engine in this video. But luckily, after watching this, <laughs> they're not going to sponsor me anytime soon, so fuck it, let's send it. Unity is the only engine less reliable than a Ferrari, slower than Sketch, and crashes more often than Tiger Woods. Now, there are people that criticize YouTube for being a right-wing extremism pipeline where people get sucked down into a rabbit hole, but I'll tell you what's even more sinister. It's the happy video game enjoyer to self-immolating Unity developer. Picture young bright-eyed TJ, just trying to mod his Skyrim game. Have I ever actually beaten that game? 
No, but I have spent countless hours debugging why my 200 mod stack keeps crashing. I mean, do, do you expect me to play the game without realistic horse eyeballs? Anyway, if you spend any time searching for modding or video game development on YouTube, you're going to come across someone who's almost like a crack dealer for game development. Someone that has spread so much unity, propaganda, and gives you that first little hit of game dev. Talking about Danny. You watch a few of his videos, you laugh, you say ha ha milk funny, and then next thing you know you're in your late 20s in your apartment alone at 3 in the morning watching videos by a girl with cat ears explaining how quaternions work. Now a Unity developer will go through three stages in their career. First is the Acolyte, in which they spend a lot of time arguing online. They're the new recruit, defending Unity to the death because they don't want to feel like they've wasted the two weeks that they spent watching Bracky's videos. The second stage is the practicing Unity developer, actually like building out some pretty cool little prototypes and getting more into the engine and thinking, hey, you know, it's got its quirks, but it's not, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not, it's not bad. And then third is the veteran Unity developer, which spends a lot of time arguing with people in the comments about how trash Unity actually is. They complain about issues with the editor and will aggressively harass the Unity Twitter account, pinging it multiple times a day, even though it's just some poor underpaid intern that's trying not to get laid off. Oh, and don't get me started on layoffs at Unity. Unity is like that one friend that says they're going to quit drinking and then you open Twitter and see that there's just another round. See, Unity to me is like that toxic ex that promises that this time this time she's gonna be different. Wanna believe that it's true even though deep down inside you know it's a lie and late at night and your phone buzzes and and you're booting up the Unity hub and next thing you know you're staring at loading bars. Hey. You know that game we all played growing up called uh, Kingdom Rush? Yeah, it was a shit. It was pretty fun. Well, guess what? I've made a game called Castles on Clouds. It takes the classic Kingdom Rush formula of tower defense and spices it up with roguelike elements and procedurally generated levels. So each playthrough is a new adventure. And I've just released the 3D version of it on Steam. You can go play it right now. I'm selling it for like two bucks and 99 cents. And by picking it up, you'll be supporting my dream of being a game developer. So I don't have to wind up being a stripper or a porch pirate or even worse, fitness influencer. Uh, I also have like a free demo of the game that includes like half the content. So you can check out the free demo. Uh, I linked it down below and let me know what you think, but thank you for supporting me. Moving on, let's talk about Unreal Engine, the flagship engine right now. As a Unity developer, I used to constantly get bombarded in my comments by Unreal Engine 5 fanboys talking about uh, why are you using Unity Unreal so much better? Like they're arguing whether Jordan or LeBron is better. Um, <laughs> it's Kobe. I'd always have to come up with some sort of excuse to justify sinking so much of my career into the Unity engine. And um, Unity is great. It, it's like, um, you ever have like a, a little kid show you a drawing they made and it's some sort of like Lovecraftian horror and you're just like, yeah, I'm proud of you. That looks great, buddy. But like secretly you're looking at his parents and saying like, you know, maybe they should take him to a therapist. It's hard to come up with something that Unity does better than Unreal. Like multi-platform maybe. I'll be honest. I kind of hit that like acceptance stage that Unreal Engine 5 is just phenomenal. It's like, um, it's like uh, when, when your friends are like showing you a new TV show and you're like, eh, yeah, maybe I'll check it out. And then eventually you do check it out and you're like, oh, hey, they... We're actually right, it is actually pretty good. It does have its like little quirks though. Like uh, there's this weird sort of almost incestuous vibe where everything's kind of interconnected. And whenever it gets really confusing with this stuff, people are just like, bro, read the source code. Like I'm not reading all that. Are you kidding me? The only thing I read is the ingredients on my pre-workout. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't read that shit. All I know is that it makes my heart race and my fingers tingle and makes my skin itch and my poo weird and it's probably gonna kill me when I'm 50. But let's be real. Unreal Engine is like the prom queen of game development engines at this point. It looks stunning. Like just scroll through Twitter and you will see little prototypes that people have built that 
out of the box, the lighting is just unbelievable. And they've got all this cool tech like Nanite and stuff. I don't know if it even works, but just like that prom queen, she's high maintenance. Unreal Engine demands all of your, Jesus Christ. Unreal Engine demands all of your resources, time, and sanity just to keep her around. It's great for making eye candy looking games right outside of the box, but actually coding in it can be pretty difficult. Uh, you'd sort of use C++, but it's like C++ with two shots of vodka. Also, let's chat about its little incestuous spinoff, UEFN, or Unreal Engine F Fortnite something. I don't know. When I first heard about it, I was like, is this even real? Like, it sounds like some made-up UN task force, but there are actual job postings for it on LinkedIn, which makes it more real than any sort of AI startups evaluation. You see, Fortnite is becoming the metaverse that crypto bros were so interested in, but unlike NFTs, it's actually holding a user base. Now let's switch lanes for a bit and chat about Godot. Godot is an open source engine that allows you to make 2D and 3D games, and it's making waves due to some other company's unique decisions. It's totally free, and despite being relatively young, there's already some hit games that are made in it. Honestly, there's not too much to knock on the engine other than it just sort of being underdeveloped compared to the other ones at this moment, but there is one negative aspect about Godot. Here's where the plot thickens. You see, Godot is like that girl on Hinge that's just a little too good to be true. She laughs at your jokes, responds to your messages with questions, and you know, you've got good vibes and you meet her and she's actually pretty cute. But she's got a massive red flag that actually isn't even her. It's her friend group. Some online communities get their personal identities wrapped up a little too tightly around their wonder wall that if you criticize it at all, they take it as a, as if you're making a personal attack against them. You know who I'm talking about. K-pop stands, Swifties. I can't, I'm sorry, I, I can't. Last year, I spent 90% of a video talking about how upset I was with Unity's management decisions, and I made one little comment about Godot's graphics not being phenomenal, and oh my god, suddenly there's a million, well actually there's this one game that, uh, like, Godot's a cool engine, okay, don't get me wrong, just maybe avoid some of the more vocal community members online, and give it a shot then. Finally, let's move on to Scratch. Scratch is a visual uh, programming language that has you dragging blocks around to create little chains of actions. So you watch the Polymars video and think that, oh, maybe if I make videos about Scratch, I'll be the next big hit in game development YouTube. Uh, you won't. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this. Please check out my game on Steam. Stay safe.